But one place where you can see a very central place for shaping the rule by which we read Scripture, you can see a central place for the Old Testament or Israel Scriptures, is in the Nicene Creed. I'll just read the parts from the second article, the first article on God the Father, the second article on Christ the Son. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. Where does this language of begetting come from? Well, some say, oh, that's easy. It comes from John 1.18. No, as, as we'll move on, we'll see that it understands begetting in a way that distinguishes it from being made. Because it goes on to say, born of the Father before all ages, begotten, not made. That distinction comes straight out of the exegetical semantics of Proverbs 8. The distinction between begetting and making is in the Greek, and it's also in the Hebrew. Now, I gave you Yaroslav Pelikan's The Emergence of the Christian Tradition in the first six centuries. I gave you a reading on the mystery of the Trinity, and it's a number of pages, but you'll see he discusses Proverbs 8 in there. It's really not John 1 that shapes that exegetical judgment. It's Proverbs 8. And he talks about the controversy with Arius over that passage. He's begotten, not made, of one being, the Greek term there is homoousios, with the Father. Through him all things were made. So implicit in that is a reading of Genesis 1, 1 already. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. That phrase coming out of Paul's confession in 1 Corinthians 15. So the key phrase is in accordance with. It's the Old Testament that constructs the rule in the first instance before you have a New Testament or what would have been called Israel's Scriptures. Of one being with the Father, this comes from their reading of texts like Genesis 1-1 and Proverbs 8. In beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. They understand that as a statement about the agency through whom God created the world, not just simply a temporal description. It's theological description. So the of one being, what kind of judgment does that rest on? Well, it's say that which is co-eternal with God can't be distinguished from God. If Christ is co-eternal, then he's, he's God. He shares in the one essence of God. Texts like Genesis 1 and Proverbs 8 identify him in those categories. Begotten, not made. Of course, that's another Old Testament distinction I just mentioned from Proverbs 8. In the Nicene Creed, the one that stands at the center, I think, is the claim of homoousios. That's authorized by the scriptures of Israel, the, the grammar of the law and the prophets, but it's fundamental to all the claims of Christianity. Christianity. 